you mean this isn't Meerkat? <laughs> <laughs> so this is live with the director of the Deathly Superman, John Schnepp. Hey. And so, you know, you know obviously set, development Chris? is something that happens. <laughs> they gave you, they gave you a, 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 a what in particular about the process of this movie not oh, happening I see. They wanted to was keep enough to create yeah, a, so like, can I make like a movie out of this? So well, it's, it, you know what? I mean, right. it's, it's right. a good question because right. there are so many right. different right. films right. that were right, so going to get made the, and then uh, fell apart. A lot of people uh, say uh, Batman uh, Year uh, One with Aronofsky. Uh, a lot of people say, oh, the, the, the Justice League uh, movie with uh, you know George Miller, you know, director of Rogue One. There's a whole bunch of films that you could point to. Okay. I mean, you know, but for me, like the, the, the Tim Burton Superman, for me, that's the interest for me was just the, the different kind of approach they were going with. So even the concept art that you see, even though it wasn't like, you know, a lot of it was misperceived by the public when they saw it, it was like a, that weird suit that you saw was just a small portion of the film. It's like him getting regenerated by Kryptonian technology after he gets killed by this weird alien. So, you know, I mean, it's a fantasy film. It's like, it's like, uh, so you have to just take it for that. I mean, it's not, you know, a lot of people get way too bunged up about a two-hour movie. I mean, it's like, look, it's like you're waiting for two years or three or four years for a, a two-hour film. I mean, just let it be what it's going to be. And there's so many other films that are, you should be experiencing. And don't put all your eggs in one basket. Let people try things. That's what I say. Like, so I think Superman Lives would have been able to try different things with that character and stretch it out a little bit in different ways that I think a lot of people would have enjoyed. But that's just me. Other people hate this. Well, you know, Sam was also on that where he was really starting to establish a little bit more with Batman Returns. Not a movie that people kind of expected. And he was kind of pushing his own kind of boundaries now. Yeah. So you come off with that kind of creativity with what he was thinking about for this film. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people these days are kind of like, where did Burton go? Do you think that this movie had anything to do with maybe some of the choices he did? The drama that comes out. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, you know, if you're in the media world, like I've worked, I've done three pilots. I worked on each one for six months, and then the show didn't go, or it got picked up, and then the president got fired. So all your work is thrown away. So that's crushing on its own. Imagine working on something for two and a half years, okay. maybe two years, doing da daily meetings and this and that and this and that, and it just falls apart. That's crushing, so it takes a lot to rebound from that. I really like Sleepy Hollow, which you jump right into, but, uh, you know, I don't know if it's definitely had an effect one way or the other on it, but, you know. Well, you talked to him, you got him, you know, the elusive sure. interview for this. Sure. Um, he's still, you know, kind of self-deprecatingly joking a little bit Oh, he's, about he's so funny and sarcastic and witty, and he was a great interview. And very, a lot of people ask me, like, what's his, what was Tim Burton like? Was he all weird and stuff? And I was like, no, he was just actually refreshingly funny and really great to talk to. So. Well, tell, tell people how they're going to get to see this film. Where well, you got, I'm just doing a very limited release. Uh, I'm totally doing it independent, so I'm just going from uh, city to city, state to state. I'm going to show the film, do a little meet and greet afterwards. We're going out to the UK. We're going to be showing it like three or four different uh, theaters out there late May. Then we're going to be doing a lot of other shows here in uh, the United States in June. We might do a little Canada run. And then it comes out everywhere July 9th. So, right, we're going to be at San Diego Comic Con. We've got a booth, and I figured that's the, that's the day to globally release it and release it digitally so everyone across the globe can then see it at the same time so and that's kind of how I wanted to do it and I was like since I'm into running my own life I was like look I'm going to make that happen exactly the way I want so to everyone who's going to watch this film if I'm not able to make it to your city or your state or your country you could definitely see it with everyone else July 9th by going to tdoslwh.com uh, the site will be up in about two or three days you could pre-order the film or just go there July 9th and watch it so and give one you think is a must-see in this documentary that you've been able to, to the, put in there. The Skull Ship. The Skull Ship. you got to see The Skull Ship. Thanks so much, Josh. Right on. Thanks. <laughs>